This is Roy Lewandowski, Extension Educator in Wayne County and member of the OSU Extension 4-H team. The title of this presentation is Interpreting 4-H Test. We're going to look at what all the 4-H test numbers mean and how do you use them. Okay, so you've followed the advice uh, that you've been given. You've taken a good 4-H sample and you've submitted it for an analysis and now those results come back and you look at a report and this might be uh, some of those typical things you might see in a report a lot of different numbers, a lot of different terms. What does it all mean? And how do you make use of these numbers? That's what we hope to cover in this presentation. When we look at forage quality measures, there are a couple of, of key components we need to look at. Dry matter is one of them. The moisture content of various feeds can be widely different. Just think of the difference between silage and hay, for example. So putting those forages on a dry matter basis allows us to compare across feedstuffs. It's very important when we begin to balance ration, rations as well because everything is on a dry matter basis. It can also give us an indication of feed quality. We know that certain feeds have to be stored at a correct moisture content, otherwise we'll have problems in storage. Crude protein is another key factor. It measures the nitrogen times 6.25 to give us that crude protein. It's essential for the synthesis of amino acids that are necessary for growth processes. Also important in milk production and muscle development. Energy is typically calculated. It's a calculated value that relates to digestibility and energy use in the body. It tells us a little bit about how we expect that feed to perform with our livestock. For beef cattle, we use a term called total digestible nutrients or TDN. While in dairy cattle, the net energy system, typically measured in millicalories per pound, is more common. We take a look at forage fiber, another important aspect of a forage test. Neutral detergent fiber is typically a, for, a term you're going to see. It's a measure of the hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin. These are all cell components. Hemicellulose is generally more digestible than cellulose which is more digestible than lignin, which is considered relatively indigestible. Neutral detergent fiber is used to predict intake. We can use this formula. Dry matter intake is equal to 120 divided by the percentage of the neutral detergent fiber. Acid detergent fiber is another term you will see. It's a measure of cellulose and lignin. So this hemicellulose has been dropped out. This term is usually used to predict digestibility. Acid detergent fiber is a component that we use to calculate total digestible nutrients, or TDN. This graph illustrates what happens as our forages mature, whether that's a grass or a legume. As they go through their maturity stages, we see an increase in the fiber and lignin, which again are relatively undigestible, and the stem percentage. So generally, we expect our forage quality to decrease as the forage plant gets older, and forage maturity is probably our greatest predictor of where we will be with forage quality. Other quality measures you'll see on a forage test result is the relative feed value. This is a calculated value. It's generally used to compare forage quality between lots of hay at something like a hay auction. Full bloom alfalfa and grass hay at seed head stage both have a relative feed value of around 100. Now a new term that uh, we're beginning to see show up is relative feed quality. This actually uses digestible fiber in the calculation and may provide a more accurate indication of animal performance. It turns out it's probably a better way of comparing across forages, particular, particularly when we're looking at a grass versus a legume. Some of the other measures that we'll look at on a forage test that help us to explain why there may be differences between forages or differences between uh, energy values in forages. We look at adjusted crude protein. This is the amount of crude protein that's available to an animal for utilization after being corrected for unavailable protein. Now generally we would like to see adjusted crude protein and crude protein really be the same. But if that adjusted crude protein value is less than the crude protein value, that indicates there's a problem. Most generally there's been some type of heating that's occurred and so that protein will not be totally available to the animal. We look at ash content as well. Now ash contains no protein or energy value. 
We know that generally the plant content of ash is around 6% in grasses and about 8% in something like alfalfa. Under a hay production system, that ash content should always be below 9%. When we get above 9%, that raises a flag. It indicates that we're going to have some lower energy values, uh, will lower animal performance. Most generally, it indicates that somehow soil has become a part of that forage analysis. And typically, some of those common causes would be maybe cutting too low, so we're kicking up soil onto the forage. It could be uh, the fact that forage has lodged and the soil has gotten onto those forages, or perhaps there was a heavy rain or maybe a flood event that washed soil onto those forages. This chart looks at a comparison of quality between legumes as we get at various growth stages. And what I really want you to see on this chart is uh, something that we might call the 20-30-40 rule, where a very high quality legume would have 20% uh, or more crude protein, an ADF value of 30% or lower, and an NDF value of 40% or lower. The other thing I want you to see in this chart is that generally the difference between the ADF value and the NDF value is about 10 percentage points. And that holds true as we go down through the various growth stages of a legume. When we look at grass or grass legume mixtures, the story is a little bit different. Generally, uh, grasses have slightly lower quality than a legume at an equal qual uh, growth stage. And the other important factor here that I want you to look at is, again, between ADF and NDF. Remember in legumes, the difference between an ADF and NDF value was about 10 percentage points. When we get into grasses, because they have a higher hemicellulose content than our legumes do, we'll typically see that difference between ADF and NDF being around 22 to maybe 25 per percentage points higher. And if you see that kind of spread, it's a, even if you don't know what your forage test uh, has come from, it can indicate that you've got a, a grass value there. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if we take all the things that I've talked about to this point and condense it down, this is taking that forage test we looked at initially and condensing it into the important components, the important parts. So we just look at the, the terminology I've talked about and the dry matter column. So I look at this dry matter content, 88%. That tells me for a hay, we're about where we need to be as far as moisture content at the time this was submitted. Crude protein level of 12 tells me that this is a not a good forage for a high producing dairy cow, but certainly would be good for much of our, our beef cattle production. However, when we get to adjusted crude protein, we see there's a little bit of a problem. The adjusted crude protein is lower than the crude protein. So that tells me there's been a little bit of heating, uh, some kind of problem that occurred at some point uh, with regards to production of this forage. And not all of that crude protein is going to be available to the animal. When I look at acid detergent fiber, uh, that's a pretty good value. Again, a little bit high for a high producing dairy cow, but certainly very good for most of our beef cattle production. Uh, particularly if we're looking at that uh, dry cow or really through about mid uh, gestation, we would be doing fine with this level of fiber. Neutral detergent fiber, again, we look at this, the difference between acid detergent fiber and neutral detergent fiber, there's about 22 percentage units. This tells me that this was probably a grass hay. I look at ash content and I see that the ash content there is below 9%, so I wouldn't expect to be any, any problem with that, lowering my energy value. And then TDN, about 54, again, about a mid-range. Again, very good for a dry cow or a cow through about mid-gestation, but a little bit lacking in energy, certainly for a, a dairy cow in production or for a beef cow as it gets into late gestation and early lactation, we'd have to supplement energy. And the same thing we could see it under this net energy system. And then a relative feed value at 98 telling us that this would be in a seed head stage for a grass or a body full bloom stage for legumes. So again, about a mid-quality forage, which is what we'd expect. I'll just move right back up here to neutral detergent fiber and make one last comment that if this neutral detergent fiber was 75 or greater, I would expect to see some real problems with dry matter intake. But at this point, on uh, this sample, I would not expect it to limit our dry matter intake. Okay, as we put it all together, we have to use nutrient requirement tables combined with our forage test results to balance a livestock ration. So a forage test in and of itself uh, gives us a little bit of useful information, but to really 
utilize it fully, we have to put that into a ration and use nutrient requirement tables and see how our forage test, how that matches up with the requirements of our livestock. And there are a number of tools out there that can help us to do that. This would be a separate presentation, but we would use things like a Pearson Square or maybe a computer program, and there are some good ration evaluator spreadsheets as well. Always remember our nutrition check, that's body condition, so watch the body condition of your animals. These photos uh, use that body condition score from 1 to 9. 1 is emaciated, and a 9 is overly fat and obese. We'd like a lot of our livestock to be in a body condition score of in that uh, 5 to up to maybe 6 range. So that will also tell you if you've got a, a good forage test as you're feeding it, watch your animals, handle and observe them, and see if your body condition score is matching up with the type of feed quality that you think you have. So in summary, the best evaluation of forage for potential animal performance is crude protein and fiber content, and we pay attention to that on our forage test results. We look at energy values. Those are calculated, but they're used to match forages to livestock nutritional needs. The relative feed value and relative feed quality numbers are calculated numbers again, but they are useful to compare forages and can help to determine forage value, especially in something like an auction situation. The adjusted crude protein and ash content should be looked at. They can be used to explain how a forage will affect animal performance or influence an energy values. And finally, remember to always watch your livestock body condition. And that concludes this presentation of interpreting forage test results.